Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the different types of boundaries that you need to know for AP Human Geography. As always, if you find value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my other review resources down in the description below. When talking about boundaries, we are talking about an invisible barrier or line that separates one state from another. Sometimes a boundary is demarcated, which means the boundary is marked with a physical item or structure, such as a wall, fence, sign, or other feature that shows where where the boundary is. Borders are also often defined and may be set by a treaty or other official legal document. When looking at boundaries around the world, we can see a variety of different boundaries. A geometric boundary uses straight lines that go with the lines of latitude and longitude, such as the border between Canada and the United States, which for the most part goes right along the 49th parallel. We also have antecedent boundaries, which are boundaries that have existed before human settlement or before the creation of the cultural landscape. These boundaries are based off the local landscape and not influenced by the current culture. For example, the boundary between Argentina and Chile, which is an example of an antecedent boundary because it is based off the Andes Mountains. Here the boundary existed before the creation of the cultural landscape. Another example of an antecedent boundary would actually be again the United States border with Canada since the line was delimited and demarcated based off the 49th parallel with most of the land not even being settled yet. So the cultural landscape did not exist before the boundary was created. To remember antecedent boundary, just think of ancestor. This boundary dates back in time. Speaking of older boundaries, we also have relic boundary. This is a boundary that does not exist anymore, but it still impacts the cultural landscape. This means the boundary can still be seen or felt, and it is impacting the cultural landscape, but it's no longer an official boundary that's being used. An example of a relic boundary would be the Berlin Wall, which divided East Germany and West Germany. The wall itself no longer is an active border, but there are still parts of the wall up today that influence the cultural landscape. The next type of boundary we have is a superimposed boundary. These are boundaries that were created by a foreign state or group. Local culture, ethnic groups, and linguistic characteristics of an area are often ignored in the creation of these boundaries since they're created by an outside power. For example, the Berlin Conference created the boundaries for almost all of the countries in Africa without getting input from the different nations and people that lived in Africa. That's just one of the reasons why when we we look at the different ethnic groups in Africa, we can see that the ethnic boundaries do not match the political boundaries. Up next, we have subsequent boundaries, which is a boundary that develops along with the development of the cultural landscape. Here, culture is the defining factor of the boundary. We can see that the majority of Europe's boundaries are an example of a subsequent boundary, since many of the boundaries are based off the different nations, linguistic groups, and cultural landscapes that existed before the boundaries were created. Then there's consequent boundaries, which are seen as a type of subsequent boundary. Here though, the boundary is created due to the different differences between different cultural groups. These boundaries are often created to divide different ethnic, religious, or linguistic groups. For example, we could look at the borders between Pakistan and India, which split because of religious differences. Hindus were supposed to go to India and Muslims were supposed to go to Pakistan. The boundary was created to acknowledge the differences between the faiths. Or we could look at boundaries that were created after the fall of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia, where the newly formed states and boundaries were based off the different nations that existed in the area. So we can see that boundaries can be created based on negotiations between different states. They can be based on the physical features of an area. They may revolve around the cultural characteristics that exist in an area, or may even be imposed by another state. Now before we wrap up, I also want to review Frontier. This is a geographic area where no state has direct power or control over. A frontier often has weak borders that are not enforced by a state. All right, and just like that, it is time to practice. Answer the questions on the screen, and when you're done, check your answers in the description of the video or in the comment section down below. As always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and supporting the channel. Plus, check out my ultimate review packet for more help with AP Human Geography. It's a great resource that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.